Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're going to be looking at several anomalies. SCP-252, SCP-1356, SCP-924, and SCP-1686. All of these anomalies are different but share one commonality. They are all aquatic in nature. For those of you who don't know, I am conducting this seminar to cover shorter anomalies that would not warrant their own specific lecture but are still noteworthy nonetheless. So, without further ado, let's begin. Item Number 252 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-252 is to be contained within a 150 meter cubed aquarium reinforced with high tensile steel plating. Guards are to be specifically trained in waterborne combat techniques and armed with model B-74H harpoon rifles with high capacity electrical discharge shafts. The tank is fitted with 15 remotely activated depth charges which are to be detonated simultaneously if a containment breach is imminent. The previous paragraph has been stricken from the document. A breeding pair is maintained under the direction of marine biologist Dr. Personnel should not approach the containment tank unless they have been previously prepared for the anomalous effects of the animals. Additional specimens of SCP-252 may exist in the wild. Due to their destructive capabilities, capture is deemed high priority. Given the difficulties inherent in the size of specimens, termination is authorized if a breach of secrecy is imminent. The following sentence was stricken from the document. Current specimens are considered sufficient and further acquisitions are not a priority. Containment of information regarding encounters will consist of standard cover story 53, drunken sailor, and administration of amnestics as necessary. Description SCP-252 is a subspecies of Ducidicus gigas. Mature specimens are noticeably smaller than average, reaching no more than 1 meter in length and weighing a maximum of 40 kilograms. Dissection shows the absence of an ink sac and an increased density of chromatophores, approximately 20 times the normal adult average. Behavior is identical in most ways to mundane specimens, except when hunting or threatened. When a member of SCP-252 detects prey, they exhibit aggressive behavior and move towards the target at maximum speed while rapidly cycling their chromatophores. This color shifting has a hypnotic effect on prey animals that make visual contact, causing them to cease all defensive behavior and attempts to flee until grappled. When threatened by a predator or otherwise agitated, SCP-252 rapidly metamorphs into an unidentified aquatic life form of extreme size with an indeterminate physiology and extremely destructive demeanor. Physical attributes in this state are in a constant state of change. Size fluctuates between 50 and 75 meters in length, with no fewer than 50 and occasionally as many as 200 appendages of various natures. Appendages shift constantly between suckered tentacles, averaging 5 meters in length, insectoid limbs terminating in barbed pincers, and humanoid arms and legs ending in sharpened talons. Details and positions of appendages on the body also vary randomly with the only constant being a cluster of tentacles around the head, obscuring the mouth area. It is currently not known how this rapid growth is achieved. Due to the potential for a containment breach, no research on the matter is currently authorized. The previous paragraph was stricken from the document. All animal life excluding other SCP-252 and mundane squid species will attempt to escape the vicinity by the most direct route possible. This fear response can cause the targets to harm themselves as they flee into hazardous conditions or ram repeatedly into container walls. Roughly 95% of subjects encountering an enraged SCP-252 develop a phobia of cephalopods. It is not known if this is an additional anomalous effect or a normal behavioral reaction to traumatic experiences. Upon review of security footage during containment, Dr. Th has determined that SCP-252's metamorphosis is in fact an advanced hallucination induced by the shifting pattern of chromatophores. These hallucinations cause the victim to see SCP-252 as a titanic sea creature with an excessively large number of tentacles. Specific details vary greatly from subject to subject, 
but the hallucinatory creature consistently presents as a greatly exaggerated cephalopod with tentacles clustered around the mouth area, additional appendages with talons or pincers, and the general impression that all features are fluid and randomly shifting. Subjects removed from visual contact with SCP-252 will remain convinced that their hallucinations were a real sea monster and will attempt to rationalize any logical contradictions inherent in their delusion, such as a 100-meter monster swimming in a 10-meter enclosed tank. This rationalization and the lingering phobia is thought to be a form of post-hypnotic suggestion. Subjects viewing video of agitated SCP-252 who have never been exposed directly experience a much less severe fear reaction and are able to perceive the squid despite the hallucinations. Subjects describe the illusory monster as fake-looking and nonsensical, but still find it moderately frightening. After a second-hand exposure, subjects develop a partial immunity to the full effects of direct exposure. Repeated direct contact after inoculation by video further lessens the effects. Acclimatized subjects can develop a complete immunity to the fear effect and experience only the vaguest awareness of the hallucinations. Addendum SCP-252 came to Foundation attention after numerous reports of sea monster sightings by commercial fishermen off the coast. Agents secured a specimen at greater than usual personal danger. Commendation for performance above and beyond the call of duty recommended. Agent allowed himself to be exposed to SCP-252's effects during first contact. Initial containment procedures were based on his reports of the specimen's size and physical capabilities resulting in an excessive expenditure of resources. Disciplinary action recommended pending oversight review. Item number SCP-1356 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1356 is kept in a small box in the storage facilities of Research Sector 9 unless approved for removal and transportation. Description SCP-1356 is a small bath toy resembling one of several generic rubber duck designs. Tests indicate that the object is made of plasticized polyvinyl chloride. It is designed to emit a sharp squeak when squeezed. When held by a human subject, the object appears to displace liquid water. If a subject holding the toy attempts to enter a lake or pool, for example, they will find that all liquid within an area extending approximately 152.4 by 81.3 by 45.7 centimeters from the body disappears. Tests performed in a small indoor pool revealed that the approximate volume of water before and after exposure to SCP-1356 remained consistent. However, even in the presence of a subject holding the anomalous duck, water levels were never observed to rise. This suggests that the object displaces the liquid to an unknown location, from which it eventually returns. No unusual or foreign substances have yet been detected in displaced water, although pH levels indicate slight increase in acidity. As the depth of displaced water never exceeds an average of 46 centimeters, a subject walking into a deep pool will eventually find their feet and legs submerged while the rest of the body remains dry. Even vigorous motions and leaps, however, never suffice to bring the upper body into contact with water. The rectangular dry space seemingly shifts to accommodate even the most abrupt movements. Testing to discover the parameters of this phenomenon, as well as potential practical uses, are ongoing. See enclosed documents for updates and results. Excerpt 1. Tantalus Effect Objective. Determine parameters of dry space. Procedure. Subjects of various heights instructed to enter water with SCP-1356 at depths never exceeding the subject's shoulder height. Subjects encouraged to make every effort to bring hands or face into contact with the water surrounding the dry space created by the object. Results. So long as the subject is in standing depth of the water, the dry space will shift in accordance with the subject's motions, appearing to create a mobile rectangular indent in the water. This phenomena, for unknown reasons, does not apply to the lower extremities in depths exceeding 46 centimeters. When the test subject bends, 
Water recedes rather than come into contact with hands or upper body. Dry space appears to maintain its shape and volume as a rule. If subject at sufficient depth bends to the point of resting on hands and knees, the dry space will be covered with water. Subjects report no change in air pressure, however, breathability of air is limited. The greatest depth at which this total submersion of subject and dry space could be achieved was approximately 1.5 meters dependent on the height of the subject. Excerpt 2. Insufficient Life Raft Objective. Determine whether dry space displacement can be used to keep subject afloat in deep water. Procedure. For subjects of sufficient strength and flexibility instructed to carry SCP-1356 into water of a depth of 2.5 meters and attempt to draw legs up into dry space. Results. All subjects reported the same results, with variable degrees of difficulty and time elapsed before exhaustion. The following rules have now been consistently demonstrated. 1. Once subject is out of standing depth, dry area SCP-1356 creates around subject, maintains its shape, volume, and orientation at the surface of the water. 2. Out of standing depth, Subject's orientation inside of dry area becomes fixed, floating at waist depth. Subject will now be able to submerge hands and forearms in water below waist level, but any attempt to raise water in handfuls is impossible. 3. Attempts to reorient upper or lower body inside dry space are exhausting, but prove fruitless. In addition, remaining in this suspended state for more than 10 minutes negatively impacts the circulation of blood to the lower body, eventually resulting in intense cramping and faintness. Excerpt 3. Sinking Test Objective. Test objects' anomalous properties when not carried or in contact with human subject. Procedure 1. SCP-1356 placed in small pool. Results. Object does not displace any amount of water or affect pH levels in any significant way, object floats. Procedure 2. SCP-1356 placed in a small pool and bombarded with jets of water and various items. Results. Despite the object's pliant PVC materials being easily damaged outside of water, when placed in any volume of water sufficient to keep it afloat, object appears to resist all attempts to sink or damage it bobbing but always remaining upright or afloat. Well, with this object's origins in mind, these results might be a prompting to examine the events and outcomes of Incident F-1992 more closely. Always struck me as our business. Dr. Druva. Addendum 1. Prolonged exposure to SCP-1356, hereafter defined as a sustained interval approaching or exceeding two hours in any depth of water, appears to affect the subject's skin, which takes on the prune-like texture associated with autonomic nerve responses to prolonged contact with water. After 2.5 hours of exposure, a subject was found to be significantly dehydrated. Despite receiving fluids before exposure to SCP-1356 and sweating minimally. Addendum 2 Of course, it seems we haven't been testing the item's intended purpose. I'd imagine my nephew would say it works rather well, Dr. C. Item Number SCP-924 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures All specimens of SCP-924 are to be kept in separate 7-meter cubed saltwater tanks within Site-46. The water is to be kept at a steady temperature of 1.6 degrees Celsius or 35 degrees Fahrenheit. All observation points are to be constructed of reinforced glass. If a tank must be entered for reasons of experimentation or cleaning, the water is to be heated to a temperature of 7 degrees Celsius or 44.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Entering tanks outside of these conditions is prohibited. Each SCP-924 is to be supplied with 85 kilograms of fresh meat on a monthly basis. The capture or elimination of wild specimens of SCP-924 is to be carried out by Special Task Force Tau-2 Polar Pathfinders. Description SCP-924 is a species of pale humanoid 
measuring approximately 2 meters, or 6.5 feet, in height. The entities have the appearance of a waterlogged human corpse, with the addition of several bony antler-like growths on the head and a set of external gills located just below the ribcage. They are capable of swimming at speeds up to 30 kilometers per hour and surviving at depths of up to 1 kilometer. SCP-924 requires a near-freezing Arctic environment to function properly and will lapse into a state of estivation if the water around it rises above 4 degrees Celsius or 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit. SCP-924 is an ambush predator, attacking prey from underwater using either a hole in the ice as an appropriate ambush location or by simply breaking through the ice itself. SCP-924 is highly sensitive to both smells and vibrations, allowing it to track prey from significant distances or through the ice. If the attack is successful, the target is promptly drowned by SCP-924. Following this, the body will be dragged down to the ocean floor by SCP-924 for consumption. SCP-924 will release drowned bodies after one to six hours. Recovered bodies show all signs of prolonged submersion and high pressure as well as liquefaction and consumption of internal organs and muscles. Bodies will also contain high levels of virulent bacteria, which when exposed to the human body, will break down most types of connective and muscle tissue while leaving skin and bones unharmed. Bacteria will remain active within the body for up to two weeks after feeding. SCP-924 was first recorded as a series of mysterious disappearances of ice fishermen in the area around while the species requires a below-freezing environment to function properly, as its internal activity lessens as the temperatures around it increases, it has been known to migrate south during the winter to find prey. The southernmost encounter with an SCP-924 was approximately three miles outside Michigan. Addendum An incident on 20 while resulting in no casualties, proved that SCP-924 are capable of supporting themselves and moving outside of the water, and that the attacks on unwary fishing vessels are possible. Special Task Force Tau-2 has revised their protocols accordingly. Item Number SCP-1686 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures the area encompassing SCP-1686 is considered to be the extended grounds of Research Site 27 and is to be closed to civilian traffic under the cover of a military proving ground. If at any time unauthorized persons are found within the area of SCP-1686, they are to be detained and questioned in accordance with Large Site Security Operations Protocol 52A. The perimeter of SCP-1686 is to be monitored at all times by members of Research Site 27 security staff via 120 WFOV cameras installed along the perimeter and satellite imagery as provided by Site Dedicated Satellite 219F. Scans of the area are to be made weekly by personnel using scout vehicles on roads built for that purpose. In the event of activation of SCP-1686, all facility personnel are to remain on site. Following the activation period, research and recovery staff are to be deployed within the grounds of SCP-1686 to recover any and all organic materials produced by SCP-1686's effect. These materials are to be catalogued and examined within the main site complex. Any materials found to be of an anomalous nature are to be retained for study and any non-anomalous organic materials are to be incinerated on site. Revision 9th of October 2010 In the event that non-biological material is produced by SCP-1686, materials are to be retained for study in accordance with Extra-Dimensional Object Protocol 11A. Description SCP-1686 is an area of land encompassing approximately 750 kilometers squared of County, South Dakota. The physical topography of the area consists primarily of grassland plateaus and has not been found to be of an anomalous nature. The flora and fauna of the region have not been known to possess any anomalous properties, although animal population levels in the area are lower than those of the surrounding environs. The area is currently uninhabited, with the exception of Foundation personnel monitoring the phenomenon and conducting biological research. 
Once every 20 to 50 days, SCP-1686 will enter its active state. During this period, cumulonimbus clouds will form within SCP-1686, generally encompassing around 60% of the total area. These clouds will rotate in a counterclockwise direction within SCP-1686, as viewed from above, and have never been observed to exit the area of SCP-1686. Upon reaching a stage of development normally associated with the production of liquid precipitation, clouds will begin to produce, via an unknown mechanism, a large number of marine organisms. These entities, which consist largely of fish and other aquatic organisms, see addendum SCP-1686-1, then fall to the Earth normally. It is estimated that approximately 93% of all organisms produced by SCP-1686 are alive at the time of production, although very few have been known to survive transit to Earth. Organisms which do survive transit generally expire shortly thereafter. Clouds produced within SCP-1686 generally dissipate after a period of 5 to 6 hours, although they have been known to persist for up to a week. While not in its active state, SCP-1686 has not been known to exhibit any unusual properties, although remains of precipitated organisms do persist in the area for non-anomalous periods of time. Addendum 1686-1 Organisms produced by SCP-1686 have been noted to possess unusual properties and physiology not concurrent with that of those known to exist within Earth's oceans. These organisms have included, but are not limited to, Thonis albicares, yellowfin tuna, with dorsal fins elongated to a length of 6 meters and possessing an especially flexible cartilaginous structure. Caspiomyzon wagneri, or Casprian lamprey, of a length exceeding 7 meters. An unknown species of crustacean bearing similarities to both nephrophidae, lobsters, and conidae, cone snails, capable of producing a chemical which, when ingested by a human subject, produces very vivid hallucinations, followed by death by cerebral hemorrhaging within 16 hours. A specimen of Carassius oritus oritus, or common goldfish, featuring three extra pairs of dorsal fins with advanced bone and muscular structures, along with a greatly enlarged hindbrain, the area generally associated with motor control. A school of upwards of 32,000 miniature Istiophorus albicans, or Atlantic sailfish, each approximately 3 centimeters in length. And a currently unidentified species of predatory marine organism of unknown taxonomic classification similar in appearance to an extremely large Amanita muscaria, or fly agaric, a type of toadstool, featuring a propulsion siphon and a variety of bulb-like growths to serve as navigational aids. Addendum 1686-3 7th of July 1979, a previously unknown species of fungus was found to have infested a large section of grassland within containment area believed to have originated from an SCP-1686 produced organism. Evidence indicates that it was most likely originally found within a mucous membrane of an unidentified filter feeding organism similar in appearance to Scylarinidae or cat sharks. Infestation grew to cover an area of approximately 3 kilometers squared within a period of 23 hours during an extended downpour. Containment teams were successful in destruction of infestation after several attempts. Samples of fungus have been retained for study. Addendum 1686-4 The 6th of May, 1986, a large increase in the proportion of Selicomorpha, or sharks produced by SCP-1686 as compared to other groups, has been reported. Organisms show abnormalities similar to those present in previously recovered specimens with an especial propensity towards increased size. Addendum 1686-7 The 12th of October, 1997, first recorded instance of mammalian organism produced by SCP-1686, organism found to be genetically similar to Belina mysticetus, or bowhead whale, following cleanup. Extensive damage done to portion of research facility as a result of collision. Cover story issued to in-range radar towers regarding testing of experimental targeting systems on large targets to account for radar contact. All future developments of Research Site 27 
are to be situated underground and current main facility is to be relocated accordingly. Addendum 1686-10 10th of September 2010 A large, approximately 30 meters in length, presumably ocean-going vessel was observed to fall from cumulonimbus clouds formed within SCP-1686. The vessel was largely destroyed by impact, but video and forensic evidence indicates that its structure was not congruent with that used by any known culture within historical record. Samples recovered also indicate that the materials used to construct the vessel, thought to be a kind of extremely dense fungal structure, did not match any known materials. The addition of increased shielding to site facilities has been recommended and is currently in progress as of the 12th of September 2010. Previously, under review. I would like to give a special thank you to Zargaran, Professor Puffer, The Morrigan, Ritalius, Karim El Ashmoui, Jebby, Pure Osmium, Sio Dio Demnatus, Revenant, Brian Sanchez, Matthew Gilmore, Eric Corbage, Kawaii Firekeeper, Longinus, Carcass Death Aqua, King Madding, James Saba, and NJ Vojak. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash the Volgan. Thank you.